Should passive euthanasia be allowed? Should a patient have a right to die? Anand Grover, senior advocate, welcome. Sanjeev Bagai, vice chairman and director of the Dwarka Manipal Hospital, welcome. Dr. Abraham Mathai of the Indian Christian Voice, Sunil Bhattacharji, Secretary of the Society for the Right to Die with Dignity in India, welcome. My first question is to Harish Salve. Let's open the debate. Mr. Salve, if a patient has previously expressed a wish not to have life-sustaining treatments in case he or she is in a vegetative state or a state of suffering that will ultimately lead to the death of the patient, in your view, should his or her wishes be respected when the situation arises? Should people have that right? Arunab, what you're, ask, what you're asking is an extremely uh, complex question. The one thing which we are clear is the religious overtones of this issue have to be taken out. So if people say God doesn't give you a right to end your life, that is an argument which has to be taken out in a constitutional society. If a patient has expressed a wish, do not resuscitate in certain events. I think there is a strong argument to say that the right to live with dignity by necessary implication means that if there is no dignity in what is going to continue, a vegetative existence is not a right to live with dignity. It is quite another matter as to what kind of machinery you need to put in place that this just doesn't become an excuse for relatives to bump off inconvenient ill patients. So I think when we focus on this debate, you must focus on the core issue, assuming it is possible to isolate the machinery and the abuse problem. Let's talk of the use. And when you talk of the use, once our constitution recognizes that there is a right to live with dignity, I think we do raise the question that where no existence with human dignity is possible, does a person not have a right to say, if I do not have that basic dignity, Please do not force so, me to live. So two arguments. Now that's one issue. No, two the points. The second is assisted suicide. No, I even, I mean, maybe I'm a liberal on this issue. I feel that if a person wills, when he's in a capacity to will, right. that I cannot take the pain anymore. Right. I would like my pain to end. I think that right has to be given to an individual. How you will protect it from abuse should not be confused with a fundamental right to say or not to say so. Okay. So I think what you would be doing an enormous job is in focusing is on the right of the individual. Unfortunately what happens is two overlays come. Oh but this will be abused. People will kill people. We'll deal with that separately. How do you isolate? How do you create a machinery with checks and safeguards? Okay. The second overlay the silent overlay is the religious overlay that God does not permit you to do this. Well, let leave that to the individual. If I'm a, if I'm a Christian and if I'm a Hindu or if I belong to a faith where I believe God doesn't permit me to end my life, I will not will it. But if I do not no, follow the my argument, own religious tenet, I don't think anybody no, no, else Harish, has the Harish right Harish to Salve, I'm, I'm not arguing on either side, don't get me wrong. But I want to get uh, Dr. Abraham Mathai of the Indian Christian Voice because you're raising that religious point out there. You know, the argument is that it is God's will to give life. It is God's will to take life. And there are miracles, they say. You know, if they give you an example, for example, of a person uh, who went into a crash in 1984. After 24 years, he regained consciousness. So this is a miracle of God. Someone like uh, Abraham Mathai will say, and there is a moral distinction between the moral equivalence of killing and letting someone die. Abraham Mathai, Harish Salve says, don't bring your religion into it. Your response. And by the way, it's an open debate. We can come into the debate as we, as we wish. Abraham Mathai. Yes, Arnab, I believe, I believe that, that God has created man and only God who created man has a right, has a right to take away life. So circumstances and difficult circumstances of, uh, of an individual does not give him the right to take away his life. And I'll tell you, assuming that this legislation comes, we are actually opening a Pandora's box. Why? Because you'll find so many 
you you have so many kind of advocacy groups like people who are lame yeah yeah people of physically challenged mentally challenged and they will approach they that we don't want to live like this so we should be allowed to die so there's no end to it therefore this has to be challenged and this should not be legalized no what if the person is lying in a vegetative state for a long Ar duration Ar Ar with no chance of recovery Ar okay harish salve is coming in yes go ahead go it's an open I debate anyone can come in and say harish salve let's not let's not harish salve let's not confuse the abuse with the use the fundamental issue is god no, commands me Arna, not to I'm steal i see arna what i'm saying god commands me not to the state he is not in a he or she is not in a position to speak so how are we to take a decision on that person's behalf no no if that person he, is not no, on no, what no 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 one check one check the question is of suffering the question is of suffering so i can also okay. turn that back dr mathai and ask you on what grounds is anyone justified to forcibly keep the patient alive when he or she has been suffering the fact of the matter is that it Absolutely. has more to do with the individual's pain and suffering i can say it's not morally right to see anyone suffer i don't think god would want to see anyone suffer you force the person to live despite the pain that's not ethically right Arunab. either uh, sunil bhattacharya i want Arunab. i want sunil bhattacharya sorry sir one minute i want we everyone into the debate and then we'll open it up sunil bhattacharya sunil bhattacharya Uh, sure you can come in uh, anand global yeah. but just let sunil yes, bharacharji make his point in yeah. fact i am just uh, I, i have heard so i can tell you simply one thing that the beautiful word was dignity dignity is the one thing which counted for any person especially elderly person i have i can give you two instances of my own life which i have experienced number one is when this uh, movement came in calcutta why i joined i have seen my father suffering from 13 years in dementia and this 13 years practically whatever the respect he earned and all these things all he practically lost so this is one thing which definitely attracted me and at the same time we are provoking for it but after some time i have experienced another thing in my uh, family my daughter in law was in coma for 16 days and in fact the doctors are about to take out all the life support only looking at me and my son they kept it for one day and my daughter in law is fine now today but even then if i am asked that with this to experience whether i support the law or not i will say i support the law because as you have said in vegetative state the the position or the people or the suffering all these things that should be definitely helped only thing is the precaution has to be taken so that it is not misused the question and at one point i will definitely tell no, you no. the question when the question of misuse of law comes hello yes go ahead go ahead sir hello uh, when the question of misuse comes when the question of misuse comes there is the question of in which law it has not been misused there is another part of it so by using by having the law for this it, the uh, uh, the apprehension of misuse should not come in the way no 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 the misuse argument will very strongly come anand grover let me come to you just for presenting a contrary view and sanjeev bagai i'm coming to you after that you see that it's a poor india is a poor country there are a lot of people who cannot afford treatment they will look to exploit the law when you permit passive euthanasia it leaves the room for gross abuse where people who cannot afford the treatment will say let the person die they will make this an excuse anand grover that's a very real possibility in india isn't it it is indeed let me answer the points in the in the manner i want i think first of all uh, religion cannot play a very important role in our decision making because different religions in our country have different points of view there are religions who actually agree with actually taking life so which religion do you actually go to so i don't think that can play a part constitutionally as hari sir said, said that actually our supreme court has said in the judgment of gyan court that the right to live with dignity 
carries with it the right to die with dignity. The third thing that you address is about misuse. I think that's a real problem. So you have to have certain very strong safeguards. And that's why the Supreme Court uh, judgment in Gyankar, which is uh, then, um, in my opinion, uh, detailed out in Aruna Shanba, is now come up for reconsideration. There they have detailed procedures. So if there is no problem, in my opinion, if the person who is actually in a vegetative state has given advanced instructions. In, take an example, if I say by a statement, declaration or a will that if I'm in a vegetative state for one month, two months, one year, I, want to, I don't want any life support systems, there, there's no problem with that. But the problem comes when I'm not given an advanced really instructions then other people have to decide. So you have to have How can they decide? Uh, no, no, no. How can they decide and yes, to that, yes, no, to that the humanity? That. No, 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 to that, to that, to that, Anand Grover. Anand Grover, the humanity argument will be put up by people like Sanjeev Bagai, he wants to come in. Absolutely. And my question yeah, will yeah, be... No. Let me how answer can, that quickly. No, no, what's Absolutely. It? Let me answer that before he comes in. Because I think it's very important that we have safeguards. Because this use is Sir, very, very safeguards don't happen so, on the ground. Do you see how humane is it? No, no, I agree. No, how humane is no, it no. tomorrow? No, no, tomorrow, suppose selfish relatives decide that we will not give I mean, food, not the we, we will not give not, water. Not the relatives. Let me answer that. No, no, watch it. So, the Supreme Court did lay down certain guidelines, which is first the thing has to come from a particular set of people. So, what is that particular that, set but of people? it has people. also to involve doctors no, 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 and no. it has to go to the High Court. No, no, no. So, there are three layers. Sir, it can't be only one person who can no, decide. No, no, no. Sir, and that sir, goes I'm, through a I'm, procedure. I'm, on, I'm only arguing from the other side. That how is it humane to deny someone food, water, and medicine that will eventually lead to their no, death? I agree. And so what happens? No, no. What, what happens also? Sanjeev Bagai is coming you into can the only debate. Put a process in no, no. One yeah. second. One second. Anand Grover. What oh, happens no. in a case where a person is in excruciating pain with multiple ailments, yeah. but is not terminally yes. ill? Then do the right. arguments now, of so compassion and reducing agony face a severe test? Sanjeev Bagai. No, no, no. Sanjeev yeah, Bagai is coming in. Now, here's the process. Let, let Dr. Dr. Bagai come in. All these elements in a procedure. Dr. Bagai. Or no, I'll, uh, I'll begin with facts first. You see. Uh, Euthanasia, uh, if you see by definition, is assisted killing. It can be voluntary, involuntary, it can be active and passive, it can be classified in various manners. But the fact remains that euthanasia deals with three core issues. One is chronic pain, to relieve chronic pain. Two is to relieve chronic suffering. And three is what we call as in terms of terminally ill patients which have irreversible damage and they cannot be revived or brain dead patients. Understood. Pain and suffering can never be classified. It can never be quantified. Now we are talking of a particular patient which is, was a nurse who was raped and strangulated and she was having hypoxic brain damage. But please understand and I'll take one minute of your time that there is a lot of patients we see clinically who have chronic pain right from birth. There are chromosomal disorders, there are structural abnormalities from birth, there are chronic patients with oncology and cancer diseases, there are road traffic accidents and of course there is what we call as brain dead patients. Now, coming to the medical science, when you are focusing on pain or suffering, it can never be quantified. We cannot say this patient has to end the life because of certain medical conditions or not. Secondly is when you talk in terms of brain dead or in a severe form of chronic vegetative state, please understand that in the last 10 years there have been tremendous amount of medical advances in which even people like Michael Schumacher which was put in a hypothermic uh, ventilatory state has recovered after almost exactly. six months exactly. of yes. perhaps no recovery in any other part of the world. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just one minute please. There are also patients, there are also patients who have begged for euthanasia or mercy killing like a patient known as Sonali Mukherjee who was a severe acid attack patient yes. and in fact she was treated by us and she has recovered. So instead of saying dignity while dying, I will rather focus on saying let's give them dignity while living. I don't think as medical professionals we can pull the plug on any patient knowing fully well that whatever best treatment we can give till the patient breathes last, that's our duty and no, that's but what we our will state, No, one second. Now, I want, I want a full response from Harish Salve on that. You see, 
we are a very selfish state mr salve we don't take of our old and aging and our sick and there has been a case perhaps you are aware of it of a 70 year old retired school teacher from uh, in karnataka who stays in an old age home till 2003 she files a petition where she seeks physician assisted death because she says i cannot afford the cost of my medical treatment right now the court rejects the petition and directs nimhans to give free treatment to her for four weeks and submit a report but with a change of the laws unfortunately there may be hundreds of thousands of people like this who will say that you know we are suffering we are not taken care of and we want to die how many people will we then allow harish salve to go along that path arnab uh, let's put them in three separate uh, silos does the doctor have a right to pull the plug is a completely separate issue from do the relatives have the right to pull the plug is a completely separate issue from saying if i am in a form of an illness which i know will head towards terminal illness do i have the right to say if i reach a particular point please do not prolong my agony do the doctors have a right to pull the plug on their own sanjeev's point is well taken the hippocrates oath obliges them to keep people alive the yes. state can never be hurt to say we don't have resources to keep people alive so that's one completely separate issue do the relatives have a right to say i cannot afford to pay that's a question mark issue how if somebody is brain dead and the the relatives are being asked to pay they may not pay which pushes you back to the first issue does the state have to keep him alive my answer is yes i am talking of a very small circle the right to live with dignity today if i am in a terminal illness and at a state when i am capable of taking rational decisions i have not lost my f- f- faculty of thinking i say i know i am heading down this road if i reach a particular point please help me exit rather than prolong my existence is that not a right okay just a small guarantee. just a small point so to that hari salve it is it is no no one second hari salve i i'm not no no hari salve i i hari salve just 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 a small a small interjection on that as i said sir i underline we are a very cruel country with our citizens yes. we have we have no health care yes. sanjeev bagai you can come in anyone can we have no health care we don't we, we don't provide Absolutely. basic medical Spot care on. now everybody is not a michael schumacher right so michael schumacher was Correct. kept michael schumacher was kept alive we don't even let people live yes. i am saying today Correct. that self assisted suicide you know what you call uh, yeah you know a person's decision euthanasia. to carry out passive euthanasia or i will not take medicines is not the issue that i want to be i want to be led to my death how we where will you up up panelists on the other side say you are opening a pandora's box sanjeev bagai yeah. wants to come back into that debate yeah. because or see, no. see this Or pandora's no. box I, I is an argument as a lawyer which yeah. we have heard when we said if you go into judicial review you are open pandora's box if you allow supreme court yeah. to review contracts you will open pandora's box no no box. sir we opened so no, many no, pandora's no, no, and no, 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 sir, pandora. sir, sir, so that that by itself is not an issue sir, yeah, harish, yeah, well, sanjeev bagai harish, sanjeev bagai is p- responding harish, to you harish my, salve yeah yeah my only my only argument is that a uh, limited resource of health care or a uh, uh, autopsy tovy economy in which some people can afford private health care and some people, some people cannot, cannot even afford yeah. government health care for routine medicines does not define or cannot be a criteria to decide I either agree. by the relatives or by certain patients yeah now my my now i'll open i'll open it to the two or three segments which you Can had uh, uh, eliminated earlier and you cannot eliminate them because they are overlapping one is medical issues now there are it's it's just not a chronic vegetative state you're looking at pain and suffering from neuro de- degeneration you're looking at dementia you're looking at uh, chromosomal and genetic disorders you're looking at metabolic disorders it's a host it's a very very large segment of patients uh, anand grover is, where do we draw a line 
on, yeah, on the, the point, point, is, point number two the point is, is whose yeah, will point, point, point number two is when 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 you are talking in terms of a chronic vegetative state i'm i agree that everyone is not a f1 formula driver who can be saved but the fact is there are advances in medical science which we call as deep brain stimulation they are being done in india too and patients do recover so it is very difficult on clinical grounds medical grounds or legal or social grounds to have a given set of criteria which in a large country like india which we can follow and yeah. lastly and I, most importantly Sanjeev, the point is, is what harish has said with the with regards with regards use and abuse it's impossible in india we cannot eliminate quacks how are we going to keep a huge that's another good point in inverted mm -hmm. commas it's a good no, point sorry. it's a good Nobody point we have you the right to pull the plug Yeah. The point is, my will, if I am in a particular state, to say, if the doctor gives me no here? hope, I would rather exit with dignity. Sir, I know your argument. I am saying, if a doctor, I, 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 I take your point. You are coming from a very basic point, Mr. Salve, and I, Anand, I am coming to you that if a person has a right to life, why shouldn't the person have a right to die with dignity? Isn't it a That's person's right. choice right. as to the degree of suffering that he or she can withstand instead of helplessly waiting for his or her death? I'm coming to you That's on the religious point as well. Anand Grover is responding to Sanjeev Bagai. Anand Grover, yes, please. Yeah, well, uh, well, yeah. Can to, I respond? Uh, to Sandeep, I can say only one thing. I agree with him that there can be enormous misuse in this country. So you have to have level of layers of decision making which take into account all that you have said. Those things have to be taken into consideration. You should not only have the the relatives pulling the plug. You cannot only have doctors pulling the plug. Yes, sir. So you have to have a layer of yes, checks and balances. One, one minute, one minute. But if you decide that a person has a, li a right to live with dignity and die with dignity, you have to fulfil that purpose. And therefore, you have to have a number of layers. for decision making now the other point is i don't think there's any difficulty if a person has decided by a will or advanced instructions to say i want to die in a particular state vegetative state then that's not a really a big problem according to me in law but when there are no advanced instructions and relatives come into the picture and they want to bump in okay, now off a bumper off then it's a very big problem uh, uh, that's where we have to take the issue okay uh, 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 one please? second anand i need or to no, i no, started with the no, religious argument point. i need to close with it because because or no just one do. point uh, sanjeev very no, briefly please because i need to go back i need or to no, go no, back to abraham mathai Yeah, because, yeah. because my bigger point yeah, is that point. we need to decide this whole religious versus natural death yeah. argument. I'm I needed to keeping, make a point yeah. on that. I'm yeah. not keeping. Yes, yeah, Sanjeev. Yeah, I'm not keeping religion? the religious uh, overtones into into my argument. My point is very straight. Passage even countries India. like Australia yeah, and Ireland and even Canada actually withdrew euthanasia by law. which they had in vogue because of the abuse problem yeah. there are just four very small and very close knit societies in the eu which include luxembourg luxembourg and uh, belgium and uh, and switzerland and so on which Holland. have limited use of euthanasia there were 11 states in us who had euthanasia and it's zero down only to washington oregon and montana even there it is restricted so in limited population also they have enormous problems of controlling its abuse in india it will be let loose it will be yes. it will be wild fire i i take your point and in these societies they do take care of their people there is social security etc but my i want to close by asking this point to dr abraham mathai dr mathai you know please don't take it otherwise but in the 21st century in the india of 2014 morality and religion even in the matter of dying cannot be the sole guiding force for law the interest of the people has to be the constitution has to be you can't bring religion as the guiding force for law making in india of 2014 abraham mathai there are some areas where where religion cannot be allowed maybe this is one of them abraham mathai arnab i'll tell you i'll tell you this ya yeah, passive euthanasia is a physician assisted suicide but it's a suicide so if suicide is an offense this also is as yeah, an offense and you are actually usurping no, god's authority over man's life 
and and as one of as one of the participants said that ours is a poor country and and the poor families they will try to eliminate their relatives it's 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 definitely going to happen and we are going to actually open a pandora's box here in a country where even kidneys and vital organs get robbed by by doctors one can really imagine if this is actually legalized what we are going to face well i i i and i said earlier there will be so many so many kind of advocacy groups people who are lame people who are mentally challenged ya yeah, people who are uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, blind they all want to say that, that we want to die because we, yeah, we want to live with dignity so the words is live with dignity is is you know it's a very debatable issue I and this should not be permitted i understand you know uh, the only argument is that when people are in a irreversible vegetative condition when no meaningful life is responsible then it can be allowed but however this is a complex debate i'm just happy we are we are presenting different points of view tonight taking taking into view different perspectives not taking a position on this the debate on dying with dignity an important one needs to be carried forward i thank our participants for joining me on debate number 2 on the news hour tonight